2003 Jaguar XJ8 and I've got a problem with it. I'm one of the few people probably left on planet Earth who still uses CDs and this thing has got a CD changer in the back here. And I'll show you what it's doing. Here are the symptoms. What it does is you put one of these in and it just keeps skipping up and if you look inside it will pretend to try to load it'll say checking disc checking disc and there this is a six disc changer and when it gets up to the end it will say no disc so it doesn't read it doesn't kick a disc in unfortunately i'm not sure what's up with that it did yesterday actually it just out of the blue so i know it has the capability of doing it so there's something probably having to do with a uh, some grease, probably some dried up grease or something somewhere in the mechanism that needs to be addressed. And I'm gonna take the thing apart. So let's see how to do that. This is not something I've ever done before. So we have to figure this out. There was a, there's a little cover right here on this, uh, this tail light thing. It just pops off and then you can get the carpeting out. So let's just pull this right like this. Okay, so getting uh, there we go. Now that'll give us access to this, and we'll have to get a what is that a star? Yeah, we'll have to get a star bit to get in here and get that out. So let's uh, find one of those and pop this thing out. Or is it? Well, what do we have on the sides there? What is that? Oh, maybe not. Maybe all we need is a Phillips. So it looks like the only wire coming from it is just this one. And it's just here with this coupler. And I'm not sure how it comes apart. Okay, yes, it actually, uh, what it does is it, there are arrows. You see the little arrows, right? There's an arrow there, and there's an arrow on this one too, right there. You just line those up, and they, it goes together, and then it kind of locks into place pretty easy all right okay so it turns out there's some things that you can't do uh, with this thing unplugged and and it's you know in order to move this gear right here to, to retract this arm um, I'm not sure what it is there's some kind of switch or something you have to throw before you can do that and um, really the only way to do it is with it in right now you can see a disc is in there and spinning and it has at least loaded one so while i've got it in this state and the uh arm is retracted i'm going to try to i'm going to try to get some see the thing is i'm not even sure where where all i should put it but it looks to me like there was probably some grease right here in the center of this wheel at least so i might try to grease it up there um but i mean it and there's there's you know obviously grease uh grease needs to be on these there's some grease over here uh, as the mechanism goes up and down so i can re-grease those for sure but i wouldn't think those would have anything to do with uh i mean they don't surely have anything to do with this retracting so uh, i might put a little grease here so that it drags some along the line i don't want to get it all over the cds but i'm not sure if there's a way around it um so yeah, anyway, I'm curious if it's playing or not, or if it's just spinning. <laughs> no, it's playing. Try a, diff try a different disc. It actually is doing it, so. Hit it again. need to try to catch it yeah you can hear it kind of in its, in, in its mid sweep it goes like that it's kind of slows down and then speeds back up so something is definitely uh, kind of catching see that's the thing about this stuff it just comes out so quickly
at least it's dry it seems to be dragging some of it down so i'm thinking uh maybe i'll cycle it a few more times and and then shut it off and try it again let's actually let's put it down all the way to disc one okay now that it's down to disc one i can lubricate some of this stuff too Ooh. let's eject Well, that's definitely working smoother than it was. Let's, let's uh, try to recycle it. Well, that's taking discs immediately now. So, oh, maybe not. See, so it'll just grab the disc and then cycle. I'm, I'm lucky it's even grabbing the disc. And it'll get to the end and say no disc or some shit. What's it gonna do with every one of them? <laughs> All right, it stopped. Why would it stop? Let's try it again. Yep, see, there we go again. Something, something not right. And then it'll just stop and stay, right? Yep. And it probably says disc error again. No, it says pause. Why does it say pause? Play, you stupid thing. Oh, there it goes. Man, that's quick. Well, it's definitely working now. I mean, uh, it's not working like it's supposed to. Though. It's not really supposed to cycle through every single uh, disc, you know, and then come back around like it's been doing. So I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. But at least it's a hell of a lot better than it was. I think I might uh, might might lubricate it in a couple more spots. I don't want to get it all over the discs, and it's already kind of in danger of that. <laughs> it's kind of slathered it every damn where didn't I? Especially in the winter time, this this stuff will really seize up. I want to go back to disc one. Okay, some of that right back in the back. I want to get some. So there was some definitely some grease here from the factory and there aren't there isn't any now so yeah, like right there I think that's probably going to be about the best I can do and we'll cycle it a few more times and maybe that'll take care of it. So cool. At least it works now. So I went driving around to check the uh, the stereo and was just listening to stereo and decided to pop in the car wash. And when I did, I was, you know, just jamming out to my stereo and wasn't thinking and boom, nailed my uh, antenna. This antenna is supposed to be straight. It's not supposed to be bent like this. And this thing is uh, gonna need to be replaced now because I'm a freaking idiot. So, 
yeah all right so uh i think what i can do here is just, just rip this the rest of the way out because it's got this this tooth yeah see that when you buy these antennas i've already looked it up and i've already determined i'm gonna have to buy it and uh so this is the part that i'm gonna need i think you can get them for about 15 bucks but i might make another video out of that now but that just blows big time right there and what really sucks is i don't know is that gonna i know there's a drain at the bottom for this but i don't know if it's going to uh i don't know if it's going to drain if it goes right down into that anyway so we'll have to fix that but that's a stupid stupid mistake Okay, so this uh, this Jaguar CD player, this thing uh, I had lubricated it, and it seemed to work for a little a little bit, and then it stopped working again. Now it won't eject a CD, so we got to figure out why it's not ejecting. I'm looking. I was looking on eBay. I was just gonna see on a whim how cheap they are if I have to replace it because uh, sometimes it's just cheaper to go ahead and replace something like this. But uh, this, so this has a connector that looks like this. If you see one that's more like a DIN pin connector where you see several pins in a circular configuration, uh, those were definitely made by Alpine, I think, just by uh, from what I'm seeing online. Uh, this one might have been made by another company, but this one is made in Hungary. Um, and it's just a different, it's a different changer. It looks the same on the front, but it has a different connector. Um, it might even be the same inside, I don't know. But the connector is certainly different and you don't want a different connector because it probably won't, uh, I mean, it, it won't hook up for sure, but it probably won't even work right in the car if you were to even rewire it, would be my guess. I don't know. Last time I tried to get it to eject, it would not e even eject the CD. It looks like right now there's no CD down in it. I don't know how that happened, but, uh, huh. So I was, I was under the impression that it had a CD loaded that it would not eject. But right now, let's see, one, two, three, four. Nope, there's no CD loaded. Let me take it back out to the car and see if I can eject this out of there with the power plugged in now. Because I was thinking it had a CD stuck over here, so um, apparently not. Maybe I was wrong. Let me try it again. Okay, no such luck. I took it back out to the car to see if I could eject this magazine, and it won't even eject the magazine. It's like it's like it's just completely stuck. So we're gonna have to take the guts um, out of this housing, and it looks like to do that we'll have to uh, take off these screws. And there's some kind of some kind of little mounts. I think is it just these? Okay, so. It's mounted with these uh, rubber grommets and then these springs so and underneath it looks like there well definitely there's some kind of ribbon connector I believe so we'll have to loosen all these springs around the edges and those are obviously there for suspension shock absorption so you know the unit doesn't just skip constantly now this should lift out of here when I push these in. Basically these just need to be pushed in. I'll also have to remember to get all of those springs out of there. Those suspension springs have to come out when I bring this out. Or before I put it back in for sure because I have to remount them. Okay. Last one. This probably, there's probably a way to get this front um, plastic piece off of here, but I don't want to break it. Well, yeah, okay, I see it, I think. I think it should be able to just pop it right off. There's little tabs here that are holding this thing in. I think it'd be easier just to get this off. Some more tabs over here. So there's that faceplate 
off. That's not really going to help me, is it? <laughs> it's not going to help me at all, actually. Um, just, all these springs are falling out everywhere. Whoop. There's a ribbon cable back here that will need to be disconnected. We can't just yank this thing out of here. All right, there's one side out, so the other side should be pretty easy to get out, but I've got to figure out how to get it out without, like I said, okay, so the ribbon cable is kind of long, and yeah, it's just that one screw. We'll take that screw out for this little, ah, shit. Okay, maybe we won't. That is soldered into place. They've got that screw soldered into place. Here, see what I mean? You see that screw right there that I have to get out in order to uh, get this mechanism out? It's actually soldered into place, so you know I'm gonna have to desolder it. They've got this one little, um, one little leg of the board was tucked in this little piece over here. So, um, this little chassis bent bend. Yeah, there's a little chassis bend over here that one leg of that was tucked into. So you got to make sure that that goes back in straight later. Okay, now we should be able to get this thing out of here. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, that doesn't bode well. It's either a belt or a little piece of like plastic shaving, like where maybe a gear has ground. But still, that doesn't bode well right there. And you can see, I think it might be just a little, I don't know, it sure feels rubbery to be plastic. I don't know. All right, first of all, I want to see, all right, so this... This turns, okay, that's that's the eject right there. So this is ha this was having trouble, obviously, it was stuck. So all of this gear mechanism right here has to be lubricated. All right, so none of that was recording. So what I've, <laughs> so what I've done is I've taken some uh, lithium grease and I've um, I've greased up this little mechanism right here, a little bit over here, along this little rail. Uh, this little servo motor right here and all of its connected components. Um, and then there's a little motor right here and I just sprayed a little bit down in there. Alright, this little faceplate plastic piece right here comes off. It looks like it comes off pretty easily, so I'll go ahead and take it off. Snaps in on the top somehow. Like that. Okay. Let's just leave that all together. All right. Um, somewhere in here there is a switch. Uh, or not a switch, but there's a you know there's a there's a mechanism that stops everything. So it won't kick this magazine out unless, um, you know, it's switched properly. And I'm not sure where that is. See, I can't even turn this right now to get it back out like I did before. So I'm not sure where that is or how it's tripped, but I'm going to have to... Oh, there it is. Right there. Duh. <laughs> okay, so that, that little piece right there allows the magazine to just pop out, apparently. So looks like we've got... Ooh, it looks like we've got maybe some CDs are halfway in, though. I'm not sure what's up with that. It's not good. Don't break my CDs, please. Okay. All right. And then that. 
Okay, so I know how to release the magazine now, at least. So that's good. It, it, but it's having a hard time on that last little bit, and I wonder why. Why is it having a hard time on that last little bit? Clicking in. Okay, looks like it. This thing grabs the tab and pulls the CD, but yeah, it's a shame I don't have some kind of way to get power to this uh, here on the bench because it would be much easier to troubleshoot on the bench, you know, if I could, uh, you know, get power to it and all of that. The other thing is too, this works in conjunction with the um, with the player up front to really play the disc. So I mean. Yeah, I might be able to cycle this and, and start, you know, moving some things around if it had power. But it wouldn't be a, a receiving any signals. Okay, I'm going to disassemble this down a little bit further. I've already removed uh, this cable from the, uh, the little ribbon cable right here. And I'm going to take the screws out of this board and uh, unplug this little motor. Probably unplug these other little ribbon cables. Um because I want to see what mechanism lies underneath this because there's something is getting stuck somewhere. This is the eject mechanism. So when it's ready to eject, this turns and pushes this over. This little armature right here hits this and ejects the uh, magazine. So that's how the magazine gets ejected. How does it sense when there is a um, when there's a magazine in there and it's ready to play a CD? There's got to be some uh, switch somewhere and I'm trying to find that switch and I want to see where the mecha how the mechanism uh, operates that's underneath here now this this might be a situation where we're just not gonna fix this thing but I want to at least try okay so you can see right back there in the corner there's a I don't know what it, what you'd call it just like a little piece of metal that's standing upright it's actually attached to a spring up here so it's supposed to move I don't know. It's probably uh, supposed to help. I don't know. Maybe grab the magazine at the back. I'm not sure. Or prevent. Maybe prevent magazines from coming out, or CDs from coming out. I'm not sure. I gotta desolder again. Another screw because it's this is soldered to the board right there. So Hook this little motor supply. Well, I'd hate to adjust those if we don't have to. Those mounting screws or those some kind of adjustment screw. I really don't know. I think they've got almost got to be mounting screws because nothing else is really holding it. I think those have got to be mounting screws. I guess we will find out. They were mounting screws. Okay. What is this? It lies just behind these these mounts, so it goes right there in that little hole. That's how it senses right there. What's going on? So that solves that that question. How does the how do the electronics 
um, interact with the mechanism. How's this? How does the sensing happen? And it happens right there with this. It's a little fader. Um, I may clean that little fader while we've got this thing out. That little tactile switch right there. Yeah, that has got to be the eject button. And two, okay. All right, so there's that board. We'll set that aside. So this is the part of the mechanism I wanted to see. I wanted to see what's going on, and why things are getting stuck the way that they are. There's some more shavings right there. A cog or something. Some more of that. Yeah, there's definitely something's something's getting shaved off in here, and it's not good. Some gears are grinding somewhere. This right here is connected to nothing, so that's not doing anything. This rail, the only thing that rail is there for is just a guide, so that's not really doing anything. And this is just a spring, so that's that's just to, eject, to help eject the magazine, so that's not really important. Okay, there we go. There it is. There's the switch. Right there. This little thing right here. Boom. That's the switch. When you push this in, the magazine, uh, watch right here on this. This little thing gets tripped. But it seems... Okay. So this, hold, this holds it. This tells this tells the electronics that something somebody's home. I'm not exactly sure yet how that happens. Oh, right there. There's a switch. There it is. A switch right there. So when this pushes in, it releases this little switch. So that's how the this motor turns on. So as soon as you press this in, automatically this motor starts working. So that other sensor that goes into here, that gives feedback uh, to the electronics, telling it how far along it is. So I don't know if... Um, Maybe that came out of this hole somehow and was was off or wrong. I don't know, but uh, I do know that unless this has enough, you know, lubricant, it may not work properly. Like I said, it's very difficult to troubleshoot something when you really can't uh, observe it working, you know. Okay, so coming to edit this video, it appears as if I've lost some clips. But essentially what I did was I went ahead and lubricated any bits that were metal on metal, like this big armature, all of this stuff is, you know, all metal on metal, and it just uh, kind of glides past each other. There, You know, there's a little shaft in the middle. So I lubricated all of this stuff. Also, uh, they're on the sides of the chassis there are some rails where the magazine lifts up and down so it kind of glides along these little rails and I saw so I lubricated every single bit of all of this stuff and now everything seems to be working just fine and it's working consistently so yeah that'll do it for this video sorry I didn't get to show you the very ending bit but uh, essentially it was just a matter of lubrication so if you have one of these um, and it's doing what mine was doing you're getting disc errors consistently 
uh, take the thing out and just completely lubricate everything where metal is on metal. So that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and for now, we'll see y'all later.